Join me today as I explore the world of Schottky diodes. Hmm, I hear you ask, what's so special about Schottky diodes? Well, they have some unique properties that set them apart from other forms of diode. They're really important in many areas of electronics. And today we're going to look at what they are and what's so good about them and how you can use them in your circuits to make a real difference but we'll also look at their limitations and a few surprising facts. These diodes are indicated on circuit diagrams by this symbol, which is slightly different to that of an ordinary PN junction diode. The cathode line has additional tags on it, making it look like an S, S for shock key, but the diodes themselves look very similar. Apart from the part numbers, they're impossible to tell apart by just looking at them. So why are they used? Traditional diodes have some major drawbacks, and one of them is speed. And this can be a real issue for things like RF applications or for high-speed switching, where the speed is crucial. Another issue with traditional diodes is the relatively large forward voltage drop. And this means that for power, power applications, a relatively large amount of heat is dissipated. And this heat may have to be removed. And this can make the equipment bigger and also more expensive. Dissipated heat is also a, a major issue in applications where energy efficiency is key. You don't want your devices to be wasting energy and heating up the surroundings. You want them to be as efficient as possible. And this is where Schottky diodes can come in. So how do Schottky diodes work? Well, before we look at modern devices, it's worth looking back at how the Schottky diode was actually, uh, how it first came about. And they were used in the early crystal set radios of the 1920s, as you may remember. Well, probably you won't. So this is what one looks like, and this is where they first originated. These radios used a form of diode which was often nicknamed the cat's whisker because what it consisted of was a piece of uh, galena or iron pyrite, which was a effectively a semiconductor and a thin wire or a cat's whisker as it was known was placed onto this to make a diode junction. And this was a metal onto semiconductor diode junction. Placing the metal wire directly onto the crystal made a metal semiconductor junction. And this is the beginnings of what we know today as a Schottky diode. Well, fast forward now to the modern day, and effectively the same concept is used, although obviously it's done with much better techniques and technology. But a metal is deposited directly onto the semiconductor, so you get a metal semiconductor junction. This structure gives these diodes some major advantages, and we'll look at these in turn. Their designer's structure means that they offer a much lower forward voltage drop. Typically, this can be a turn on voltage of about 0.2 to 0.3 volts, which is much lower than that for a standard silicon uh, PN junction diode. But that's not all. Schottky diodes are also really fast when it comes to switching speeds. They're capable of handling high frequencies uh, with ease, and they're much better for radio frequencies as well. So where are Schottky diodes used? They have many uses, in fact, but one of them is within power supplies for rectifying AC incoming power and converting it to DC. The lower forward voltage drop means that much less heat is dissipated and the rectifier is far more efficient. And they're also ideal for switch mode power supplies as well, where their forward voltage drop and their high switching speeds come into their own. Also used in RF applications as well. Again, their low forward voltage drop is ideal, but also their fast switching speeds means that they can handle the RF frequencies with ease. And they're used in everything from signal detectors to uh, mixers and a whole load of other areas. Their biggest drawback is that they have a relatively low maximum reverse uh, voltage breakdown. 100 volts or so is the maximum that you can get for a silicon shock key diode. Silicon carbide shock key diodes can improve on this, but that's a story for another video, and maybe you'll want to come back for that.
It's also worth remembering that the leakage current of these silicon shock keys is much higher than that of standard silicon PN junction diodes. This diagram is not properly to scale, but it does show how PN junction diodes and shock key diodes perform and a comparison between them. The leakage current could typically be measured in nanoamps for a PN junction diode and possibly microamps or even milliamps for a shock key diode. This leakage might just be an issue in some circuits, so it's worth remembering. To sum up, Schottky diodes are really amazing devices. They offer a really low forward voltage drop, and also they offer very high switching speeds, which mean that they're ideal for many applications, for many circuits. If you're interested in learning more about electronics, then please come back and watch more of my videos like the one you see here. Thank you. Thank you.